I don't believe you can hear me. And, um, we had a lot of um, assignments to look at. Uh, coupled with the fact that I gave you a video to watch, a video that had to do with uh, a flex box. I don't, I don't know if it was a little bit complex or was straightforward for a couple of people. Before we go ahead and get started with today's class, I'm going to unmute my mic. So this class is going to start with interaction. And you're free to unmute your mic and comment about the Flexbox video we looked at earlier. If you have anything to say, any questions to ask, if you don't understand it, if you want me to go over the entire Flexbox um, example before we get started with today's class, now is the time. So the mic is open. You can unmute your mic and make comments regarding Flexbox. Hello. Um, okay. Good evening, everyone. Yeah, good evening. Go ahead. Yes, uh, my question is, where or when do we apply the flex box? Where, where does it come in, actually? Okay, um, I define flex box as a one-dimensional layout that allows you to align objects on the web page. So basically, at any point where you want to align objects in a specific order, in a one-dimensional way, the yeah, flexbox is going to be applied. What do we mean by one dimension? It means that the, if you want to align objects vertically, you can apply flex, flexbox. If you want to align objects and horizontally, you can align flexbox. Vertically, I mean from top to bottom, and then horizontally, I mean from left to right, or from right to left, or from bottom to top, for vertically. So that's basically when you can, in, at any point in time where you want to have objects aligned on your screen, flexbox can come into play. Is that clear? Yes, it's okay. Thank you. All right. But yeah, for those that are coming in, we are talking about uh, Flexbox, the initial Flexbox video that we watched. And if you have any question, comments, or we should, if it's properly understood by everybody, and you think we should just go on and keep coding, then we can go on and keep coding for today. Or if you want me to go over uh, the entire Flexbox um, tutorial, maybe explain some specific concepts. This is the time you ask your questions, and I'll go right. Any other question? Hello. Hello. Yeah, go ahead. Hi. Hi. Um, the flex wrap. What is it mean used for? Flex wrap, right? Yeah. Yes. Here we had um flex wrap, and we had um a new wrap, um wrap reverse and um wrap, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. Basically, let's assume now you have. Uh, okay, you can see, you can see my web page to the right, right. So let's assume now we have a web page of about yes. two uh, from left to right, and we're aligning objects from left to right, and we have ten objects to align. You get. Okay. Okay. Let's put it this way. You have you have a crate of uh, mineral, right? Uh, Fanta, um, Coca Cola, or let's say Miranda, Miranda, and um, in each crate we're going to have about twenty. 24, um, ob um, 24 drinks or bottles of um, Mirinda in it. And now you're, you're going to be placed, and now the, each um, drink is outside the crate, and you're required to restock um, each of the drinks back into the crates. Now, you start from the first box, you start from the second box, you start from the third box, and you start from the fourth box. And you keep stacking drinks, but the, the crates that you're making use of now to restock your drinks, you find out that instead of actually being 24, as every normal crate should be, it ends up being it ends up being 20. You get now what flex wrap does is this when you get to that point where it ends up being 20 and you still have other um, drinks to stack rather than discarding the drinks or maybe putting them on the ground, it will create a few more um, columns or a few more sections under the crates that you just got to the end and restack the remaining of, um, drinks that you have. So, you get so if you're designing um, a web page and you have divs that stretch from left to right of your page and you're, and you're stacking, you're expecting that the divs are supposed to align on a single line and you get to the end of the page, rather than having a very awkward design where your divs actually extend outside your container or, your, or a specific part of your page or have your page having a, get a horizontal scroll bar where you have to see the other page to restack it, it's going to break down the divs you have and move it to a new line. So basically, in simpler terms, it helps you wrap your objects. If, if you've used Microsoft Word before, you will see what we talk about a word wrap. When, they, when words are getting to the end of the page, to break it down and bring it down to a new line. 
clear? Yes. All right, welcome. Any other question? All right, so it seems everyone understood uh, Flexbox. Okay, so before we get started, let's be sure that everyone understood Flexbox. So we don't start going back and forth with, um, with the explanations. Question now, the question is this. When do we have the cross axis alignment moving from top to bottom? Anybody? Um, can you hear me? I can hear you. When the wrap or the flex is in a row. Okay, when, when the Hello? Yeah, when the flex direction is in a row, that's perfect. Okay, that's perfect. So, okay, if you understood that, then I guess we have. So, let's look at what we have for today. So, today we're going to be moving on to um, design, um, designing the main section of our website and moving some of the text a little bit down. I'm going to expand the web page. Yeah, let's find that and bring our Visual Studio code to the left hand side. Minimize that because right now we've not worked on. Um, let me adjust my mic a little bit, sorry. Because right now we've not worked on on responsiveness of on the responsiveness of the site. So after you have like, expanded, so you can actually see the changes that will take place. Okay, so we are going to be working with the main section. We have a main section here that has the get that perfect body, and it says what is perfect body. Okay, it's within the main is the header called main, and under the header called main, we have a class, a div with class of info. So under main, we're going to do this. We say main dot info, and then we say display flex, display flex, and um, this is a flex direction of color. And uh, what again? The name is a class, let's not do the flex. What is a class? Let's check that. That class, okay. Flex direction of column. And let's justify the content. Justify content uh, center. Okay. And um, again, align items center. Items and so, yeah. so that's it has moved to it has moved to the center of the page. So basically, if you understood from the flexbox video we had, we use justified uh, content to align item on the center of the main axis and use the align center to align the item on the center of the cross axis. So if we're having a column right now, the main axis is from top to bottom of the vertical and the cross axis. Is from left to right. That means justified center moved it to the center of the page from top to bottom, and the main axis actually brought it down here. So that's, that's why we normally talk about that. Let's give you the height. Let's give you the height of um, 70 pixels to create more space to work with. And the padding of 10 pixels. Let's do 20 pixels padding. Now work. Yeah, that's what I'm going to the right. Okay, let's make 10 pixels. Okay, can really see changes here being made, but we're going to target the individual items and uh, push it down into bits. Okay, so let's target this. Let's target the paragraph within. I think there's a paragraph within here. Okay, H1. Let's target the H1 element first. Each one element within the each one element. Let's give it a font size. Let's make it bigger. Font size of let me guess 40. Let's say 50 pixel. Oh, my typing is a little bit off today. That's too big. Let's say 30 pixel. That's too small. Okay, 50 pixel should be okay. That's a split quite small. And let's give it a color of it's already white, right? So we need to still emphasize the white color. Okay, we can take this out later. Let's just give it a color of white and then font width of gold. 
question for you to do. Okay, let's target the next object, which is the paragraph on the okay, H1. Um, scroll down, scroll up a little bit. And let's give that a font size of 30 pixel. And the font width. Old. Right? Okay. Let's go and inspect the page and see. This is, this is actually what we want. So I click and click on inspect. And then let's see what we are working with. Let's click on get that perfect body. Where you, where you, where you. Okay, info, get that perfect body. Okay, so I think I would like it to come a little bit down, it's quite up. I don't know, it feels weird being that up. So let's see how we can move it a little bit down. Um, what should we do? Okay, let's do it from here. Let's say imagine. Imagine, so let's say it's going to affect much. Let's say 30 pixel. Much. Okay, let's let's give the meaning for the border. Let's see what the size. Let's give it two pixels, solid red. That's what it looks like. Okay, that's why it's not moving. <laughs> that's why it's not moving. The, the container element is actually pretty small. I was I, I actually expanded it to bigger than that. Okay, I gave it a height of 70 pixels. So I was trying to type 700 pixels. That's why the object is not responding to it. Yeah, that's it. So it was, it, was, it was limited in height, that's why I couldn't move down. And now that we're giving it 700 pixels down, but it's a little bit too down. Let's move on to the nav bar. Let's, straight, let's straighten out the nav bar a little bit before we come back uh, to working on the text. The nav bar, let's check the nav bar class. As I'm typing this, just, I think, I don't know if I should unmute the mic because I'm sure you have suggestions. On, how it's supposed to be in our class. I just let you suggest what you think I should type. I think we've learned enough already. Let's give it a display of flex as well. Yeah. Okay. Let's see it works. Flex direction. Row. It's not going to do anything. This is the default styling of flex direction. So it's already on flex row. Let's justify content and now move. Let's do space evenly or space between. Let's do space between. Okay, where is it? It says many text. Yeah, you know, space between. So we have equal space between each text. One was asking me how we're going to move our items to the right. You can see we really did that. Let's align items to the center. Align items center. Yeah, and let's do that. Is that Look at the logo to the left, so you will see the align icon actually taking effect. It moves it down a little bit on the center of the cross axis of the row. We are repeating the color again, not necessarily the default color is really white, but let's just do that. Uh, what to do? Let's do the font width. Make it a little bit bold. Make it a little bit bold. You see, the text is a little bit bold now. Then let's ensure that the nav bar stretches from the extreme left to the extreme right of the page across the screen. Let's give the width of 100%. And I can type in the of this nice 100% and the height of 70 pixels. I don't want it too big here. You can't see anything in the nav bar now, but if I was to give it a background color just to allow you to see what's going on, it's so red. Just, you can see that's the nav bar. That's the nav bar over there. But that's, Looks scary. So let's go on. Let's give the position of fixed. We don't want we don't want the nav bar uh, moving around when we're scrolling. So let's give the position of fixed. Why do you the front weight? Yeah, I need the front weight. It's really bold. So um, what else do we need to do? So we're, we're going to need a transition property. But I think we'll leave that out for now. Let me just write it out. I'll come. We're going to do transition. Let's do 0.7. We'll, we'll 
come back to that later. So we are going to add a little bit of animation to it. Let me comment that out. You can see the customers of Africa. But let's work on the right side of the number. I think the right side of the number is under has its own property of has its own class of nav bar rights. So let's do a little bit of let's do a little bit of the nav bar. I'm sure it's I'm sure it's looking a lot easier now for you and uh, right. Let's do a display also of flex because we want it to stretch out and not be stacked on top of each other. Save, you can see that stretched out and align items. Items center. Yeah. You can see that. Um, we're going to now target the UL, the unordered list. Now we target we targeted the general class that is housing the uh, the unordered list and the call a uh, message. That's um, not bad, right? Now we're going to target this the UL here now. The unordered list. And we're going to say let's call that not bar UL. We're targeting the UL. I'm going to give you the display of flex as well. I want to stretch that out. See that the display of flex is all lined up against each other. If I was take out the flex, safe, it's stacked up against each other. So I'm giving the display of flex and it stretches out the nav bar. So it's, it's, the, the design of flex box is um, it's quite straightforward. The point that if you have a general idea of how it works from left to right, it's easier to grab. There's a, there's a more advanced design that works in two dimensions, and that's a uh, grid. Layouts. I'm not going to be looking at good layouts in this tutorial, but it's a little bit more complex and has more properties to remember. But the design of flex was actually more straightforward than this. So we're just giving it a display of flex and automatically it's already on um, flex direction of rule. You don't have to define that. So it's actually fun to work with. Let's let's work with this list style. I'm going to do a list style of none because we want to remove the dots that we attached to it. Let's remove so that like list style of none removes the dot. It has dots attached to it. It's, it's a list, so it has dots attached to it. So bullet points is what you like, what you have on the PowerPoint. You remove that. So you want to make it, you want it look like it's just like a normal link in a web page. And uh, what else do we need to do? Okay, it's too close to each other. So let's give it a margin of right. Margin right of um, that's 50 pixel. Sometimes I just throw in large values, it's what it looks like. That's too much. Okay, let's do 20 pixel. 20 pixels. Yeah, I think yeah. that's perfect. My eye looks perfect. I don't know in the world how it looks in the world. I think you agree with me that it looks perfect. Now I'm going to target the list items within the other list. You can see the list items within the other list. And that's um, where are they? The, the allies, list items. Now we're going to say navbar list item. I'm trying to stop the course here and ask questions, but let's just get done with this. Since we already started with pixel, 20 pixel, yeah, padding of 20 pixel. Now, when, you, when you're talking about padding, padding takes uh, four, padding takes, um, okay, we have padding top, padding bottom, padding right, padding left, you saw that in your assignment. Now, you can use a single keyword, a um, single um, property, padding, and it can take four values. You can have the padding, I think, if I remember that, it starts with top, right? So we can have top of let's say 30 pixel, zero, zero, zero. Let's divide the share. That's what I was about it. We can have 30 pixel, zero, zero, zero. Okay, it's, it's comes with top first. Top, right, let's give it 50 pixel. Right, bottom, let's give it 100 pixel. Push it back up. Bottom, then left, let's give it 200 pixel. I just want to show you uh, that's how it works. So if it's taking four, if it's taking four properties, it comes from top, right, bottom, left. You don't want to declare top, right, bottom, left. You want to be passing left, passing right, and all that. The same thing with on margin. But if you're going to have two values, if you're going to have just two values, then the first value represents the top and bottom value, and the second value represents the left and right value. So we're going to give, we don't want to move, we don't want to move the objects up or down. We want to affect the top or bottom padding. So we're going to give it as zero. We want to affect the left and right padding. So we can separate each of the texts from each other. I'm going to give them 20 pixels. Save that. You see that? You're just typing out the code and the website is uh, is responding. It's quite fun to watch. So let's look at the colors. Let's look at the colors button. The colors nav bar to the regular right, uh, nav bar the colors. That's this that says um, uh, 
that says calls those reverse so attack are targeting that class right now. And if you look at it over, it has a class of colors. So let's look at that under the navbar. That's what we're just we're having the setup of navbar. It's not necessarily just put colors alone. It's actually going to respond, but for cleaner code and someone knows where the colors is being housed, you write the parent element and then come into the child element that you're targeting. Let's give that a pattern. We start with a pattern of two pixels from top to bottom and um, 10 pixels right. If you, if you notice that, you might wonder why I didn't just give this as zero pixel as well. If you notice it's a little bit to the top. You might not, if you have a very, if you have a good eye for design, you see that the colors is a little bit up above the contact or so. I'm using a um, two pixel just to bring it down a little bit, top to bottom, adjust it and let it align with other elements. And uh, let's give it margin right. So I want to push it away from the screen a little bit. Margin, margin right of 20. It's not that much. It's okay, not much. It's okay. Let's get a border radius now. Let's all make it look solid. Let's get a border radius. Radius of um, 10 pixel. Don't have it too much. Let's see 20, okay. 20 pixel. Um, so let's leave that out. It's not going to show first. Let's give it the border first. Okay, let's let's give it the border before we give the border radius. So you want that's not what the border radius is. Let's say border. Let's give it two pixels solid. And um, let's call it should use tail. Okay, I have this out. I researched this RGB value earlier, and um, we can use uh, what do you call that? That's 12 red, green, and blue can have the same color. It's going to give you a very light shade of two. Yeah, that's it. And um, then we can now go ahead and make keep the border radius of 20 pixels to round it up. You can see it's round now. Okay, let's do the font. Let's make the font bold. Font width, bold, and um, what again? What is going to be unique to this? I think we should give it a color. What do you think? You think we should give it a color? I think we should give it a color. It looks pretty weird like this. Um, let's give it a background color. Background. Yeah. So it looks a little bit relevant to the eye. RGB. Border will reduce background border border. Okay, let's let's use this. Doesn't make much sense to have this here. Okay, I think you guys must have pointed out out there. Let's put this here. Okay, then let's use white here. Solid color. Right, right, right. Yeah, that's better. I think it looks nice that way. Yeah. So okay, so what else do, can we do before we call it a B? Let's let's make this links look a little bit pretty. Yeah, okay. The colors already has this beautiful color and all that. So let's make the links now bar nav bar a. Let's give let's give them a padding of that's it. Links now padding of 10 pixels. 10 pixels. Yeah, then um, give them a color of white. Then text decoration. Once we move text decoration, we want to remove on the line, give it none. You see, the online is gone. So now we have a link. Well, how are you going to know if it's a link without us? Let's give it a pseudo attribute of hover. So when um, our mouse moves over it, you actually know where you are at that time. So let's give it a pseudo attribute of hover. And um, the pseudo attribute is just going to have a border, bottom, a two pixel solid. And then something, let's, let's use the same color. Let's repeat it here. You can actually have variables in CSS that uh, we're running out of time. We have about 10 minutes. We can actually have variables in CSS that allows you, you can see that you can see the line, right? But that's too, it's too light. Let's make, let's make it at four. So it looks like right, this thing looks very light. Anything we can do to improve you. Okay, let's, let's leave that for now. 
Okay, so we have this, 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 you can see the line. Okay, let's add the transition. The line is moving too fast, you notice. It's moving just, it's just jumping from one point to another. So let's go back to, let's comment our transition and now back. So wait, sorry. It's a little bit longer. Let's make it zero point six. Okay, everything actually affected directly, but we'll sort that out later as we go along. So I, I, I think I think we're getting started with you're giving the website a bit. Okay, yeah, this has moved up based on our as we adjusted uh, the nav bar. You can see the nav bar fixed. See, it's not moving away as we're scrolling because we set it as fixed. If we set it as position fixed, as we're scrolling, the nav bar will go up with it. So we want the nav bar to be kept at the top while we're scrolling our text for the other sections of our website. So we have about eight minutes more. So I'm going to unmute the mic back and continue the session. Session of the course.